All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we are starting C, measurement, data display, and interpretation. Now we've covered A and B already, and hopefully you've been going through those videos and working on your fluency in those areas of the task list. Remember, for the test, we want to be fluent across the entire task list. If you're a second or third time test taker or fourth or whatever, if you're a repeat test taker, don't just focus on the sections you feel you're weak at. You need to remember to focus on the entire task list. Now, with that said, we're going to start with C1, creating operational definitions of behavior. Very important topic, if not straightforward. And so we're going to simplify it as much as possible while also trying to give some extra context to help you on your exam and to be a better practitioner. Please like and subscribe if you have not already. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. All right, start bearing, to start very simply, an operational definition is a clear, concise, an objective description of the target behavior. So if you were just to sum up what is an operation or definition, it's a target, it's a description of a target behavior that is clear, easy to understand, concise, so only using as much language as necessary, and objective. We're not bringing opinion or feeling into it, it's just fact. Definitions should be observable and measurable. We're always targeting behaviors we can consistently observe and measure. And then operational definitions specify exactly what one response looks like, which helps with identification and measurement of behavior. So when we are creating an operational definition, we're creating an instruction. We're telling somebody, this is the behavior, and this is what you're going to look for or identify when you're treating that behavior whether that's measuring the behavior or assessing the behavior or even intervening on the behavior, the definition is the instruction. So definitions should not be ambiguous or subjective. They should not be written in a way that is open to interpretation. They should be written so that they are interpreted the same regardless of who is reading the definition. Now, as with everything, it's never going to be 100%, right? I can be as precise as possible and someone still may interpret it a little differently. The key is getting as close as possible to where no matter who's reading the definition, me, you, a technician, a teacher, a parent, we all agree on what the definition is and what the target behavior is. So let's look at this example. The target behavior is aggression. And with something like aggression, we want to be as precise as possible. So when Johnny is aggressive towards others, is not very operational, right? What does that mean to be aggressive towards others? How am I going to measure that? How are you going to measure that? How are you going to be able to reliably and consistently measure aggression if we haven't actually defined it? It's subjective, it's vague, it's not observable, it's very ambiguous. Let's look at a better definition. So instead of aggression, we're going to say hitting. Definition, any instance of Johnny's open hand or closed fist, making forceful contact with another person's body. And notice how we also have exclusions. And so some important details here is we've defined it. We also have an onset, so when the behavior starts. We have an offset when the behavior ends. And then we have these inclusions and exclusions. So a hitting would be a slap, a punch, objects, exclusions or high fives, accidental contacts or self-injurious behavior. Now, why are these exclusions important? Well, we don't want to be reinforcing or punishing or putting on extinction the wrong behavior because we think it fits the definition. So yes, this definition is strong, but we've taken it a step further to include what we are actually looking for and what we aren't looking for. So we want to be this precise with our definitions. So how do we go about the process to define the behavior? So one, we've got to identify the target behavior. What are we trying to define? Hitting, on-task behavior, compliance, what, what is our target? Two, we've got to observe the behavior, so we watch them, right? We have to directly observe it. 
And what does it look like? What does it sound like? And you want to repeatedly watch so you can capture all these different inclusions and exclusions. And then the topographies. Well, what does it look like, right? What are the physical movements involved? How can we describe it in a way that anyone's going to be able, be able to understand? Look at the onset and offset. When does it start? How does it end? Why would that be important? Well, for measurement, of course. We want to think about the inclusions and exclusions. What do we want to include in these behaviors? What do we want to exclude? Think about response classes, how big they can be. So what is our true focus and what are we trying to get rid of? Or maybe what are we trying to reinforce? And then you want to test it. Read it to someone else. Let someone else read it. What are they picturing? Have them describe it to you. Is it what you are picturing in your mind? Can two people agree when the behavior occurs just by reading the definition? So don't explain the definition. Just have them read it. Have someone else read it. See if they agree. More key components of definitions. And you might be thinking, well, why so much information about this topic? Because this is where it all begins. If you don't have a good operational definition, you're going to have a weaker intervention just by proxy of not being able to trust the data and the observation and the measurement. So a strong operational definition includes an objective observable description. So we're describing what's happening. Clear boundaries. What are inclusions? What is considered an instance of behavior? What does it look like, sound like, feel like? Clear boundaries, exclusions, what is not an instance of the behavior, and when it is not the target behavior, and then examples and not examples. So specific instances that clarify your definition. So finally, our key takeaways. Operational definition. We want to be clear, objective, concise, measurable. All these things, right? Fact-based definitions that are easy to observe, easy to measure, and that are agreed upon by anyone who's reading that definition. They are ensure objective, obje objectivity, reliability, consistency, and, and good, accurate measurement. What do they include? An objective description, inclusions, exclusions, and then examples and non-examples. How do we do it? We observe, we look at the topography, we look at the onset and offset, we think about inclusions, exclusions, and then we test. All right, thanks for watching. That is the beginning of C in our six edition task list series, Operational Definitions of Behavior. Please subscribe so you get all of our video updates. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.